Hi, I'm Pang Mo from Rocket Screen. This is the third part of the HWGC Pick and Place Machine Guide. Today we'll be running an actual uh, pick and place process from start to the end. So let's begin. Uh, on our last part two of the uh, guide, we have finished all the way up to feeder setup. Today we'll be doing a little bit more on the setup. There's quite a few more setup that we need to do before we run the actual job. The first thing that we need, we need to look at is the diagnosis here. When you click on this, if everything is being set correctly, there's no error, you should be getting this uh, status. There will be zero error. But if usually if you have some misconfiguration on your, on your feeder, then some error might show up here. But that depends on what kind of error that uh, that you did in the setup right for, but for our case there's nothing wrong with the feeder configuration and setup so we need to close this and we need to click on the SMT run under the SMT run there's quite a few of uh, section for you to look at the first part is the when you click view it basically give give you a view of uh, a mock-up of your PCB panel and the components are being placed around the board it is not an actual size of the component but a representation of the component on your board right the next one is the info info will give you some statistics on your pick and place process for example like your time the pick and place job that is being run or it could also give you the number of PCB that you have mounted and it also could give you a lot of information especially on the drop rate or if a component is being picked but being detected as abnormal under the vision camera things like that from that you will be able to detect if there's something wrong with a particular nozzle or a particular component on top of that you could also uh, save a lock when you run a job into a file so that option is given if, if you can you can give it a directory for where you want to save the file other than that uh, there's also this part to control the speed of your machine which I have shown earlier in part 2 of the video the XY speed is the head moving speed we have selected to it to be 40 and but you can run faster if you want to especially if you are having those uh, larger machine or if you have this 50 feeder machine but the one that comes with a full body that one will be very stable to run at higher speed but in my case I'm having a custom made table to support the machine and I'm more comfortable running the machine at the lower speed but 40 is plenty for me to to do the pick and place process and at the same time do some reflow on the PCB that has already been mounted with components and the second option checkbox here is flash LED the flash LED option is used to decide on whether the LED on the front small cameras is either you want to turn the LED all the time or you only want to turn the LED when a component is being brought over on top of the camera for vision recognition this option was given as I was told by HWGC that uh, the there are certain components that requires a longer exposure time if you were to turn on and off the LED that will give some issue on in terms of the amount of time needed to spend on exposing the component under the camera so that is the reason that uh, this flash LED option was given in in our case in most of the cases you need to enable this flash LED I also believe that by doing so the lifespan of the LED can be stretched longer right other than that you can click on SMT setting then there, there'll be a bit more few more setting here let's go through it one by one is mount there's two part on this is mount 
one is your feeder especially if you want to disable a certain feeder for whatever reason maybe you have run out of the components in the wheel format and you would you wanted to place them by hand then you can disable that particular uh, feeder and that feeder will be skipped for the entire job right and on the right hand side is your PCB uh, this this option allows you to enable and disable any PCB on your panel that you, that you do not want it to be mounted with components. This is a very good option in the sense that uh, most PCB factories has an option of uh, allowing uh, what they call it X out. X out means within a panel there will be a situation where one or two bots of the of the PCB of your entire panel that is uh, that, that doesn't pass any QC it means it, it is not qualified I mean there's some something wrong with the board so they're gonna mark a cross on the board in this case they will still send the board to you but you know that this board is not supposed to be used this is one of the option uh, usually offered by the PCB factory you also have the option of not accepting any panel that has X out board in this case your entire panel must be perfect before they are being sent to you right so this this is the option that, that you can use to to select and disable any pcb on the panel right in our case i'll be using every single piece uh, of the pcb in our panel as uh, most of our pcb are being manufactured by specifying that we do not accept any x outboard right and as you can see the green color is the board that is not being mirrored on the left hand column and the yellow color is the one the PCB that is being mirrored other than that uh, there's nothing else on this part of the setting but if you were to look at the left hand side where you disable a particular feeder but if let's say you only wanted to skip certain part of the component what you can do is you can just uncheck this particular checkbox over here let's say you decided not to mount this capacitor 10 picofarad you can just uncheck the box and that pick and place process will, will skip this particular component okay so moving on plate start index refers to the components on your tray in our case we have only one tray which is the qfn 48 80 mega 4809 so click on the select start index and you can select at which particular uh, index is the starting point for the machine to pick up the component right now uh, i have filled up the tray with components from here all the way moving towards the right hand side the component will run through from left to the right and move towards the bottom okay you if you were to have a few more tray over here then you will have uh, other options of selecting those uh, start index we are not going to click save because uh, currently our component has already been set correctly at the first location on the tray okay and there's this option of hollow PCB hollow PCB was described by HWGC as uh, there are certain PCB panels or PCB designs that have some odd shape in such a way that you might have a, a wide area maybe like a like a gap in the PCB panels that uh, basically avoids the sensor the sensor on the machine that detects the PCB on the panel so when when that happens the machine is unable to detect the presence of the PCB on the conveyor belt right so if that is the case then you need to enable this hollow PCB I have never used any PCB as such design but I believe that when you click this you would need to basically manually um, place the PCB on the conveyor belt you will not be able to detect where is the start of the bot on the conveyor belt and the second option over here open vacuum very early again was described by HWGC as a, a very rare condition usually being used by some certain industry but i have never come across to use this thing before so 
I'm not too sure about that, but that that is what I'm being told. And looking here is solution. If if there's a cheap visual recognition that fails, what do you want the machine to do? Uh, usually, this is the only option. The bottom one remedy after the bot is finished was is not available under here. But the one given here is drop directly, basically into the bin location that you have specified earlier, and it will try to repick. And retry count is the um, the number the amount of retry that you want the machine to do for that particular component. Usually, I set it to three, and after if let's say it try after three times. And it still fails to pick and uh, have the component correctly recognized by the vision system then it's gonna give you a, uh, an error and you it needs a user intervention to fix the problem right and moving on is the mark setting usually when you have a mark auto automatic mark recognition fail during the during the when you put in your PCB to the conveyor belt and, but the system fails to detect the mark point accurately then a war, an error will pop up so usually what are the options when that happens do you want to use a manual mark or no mark at all usually I, I guess this no non mark situation shouldn't arise I mean we should use mark whenever it's possible okay so that is the option and second is you have this again this is not an option when the mark fails the mark recognition process fail exit the current PCB then exit auto these are basically telling you that when the mark fails it would basically release the PCB and push the PCB out okay other than that there's nothing else on this section and here here they'll be showing some real-time uh, information on the speed of the machine that is running in terms of uh, chip per hour cph this machine uh, the 50 feeder version can run all the way up to 7500 with the vision recognition enabled i have seen on this machine itself running some of my project we managed to achieve something about 4000 plus about that but uh, I have seen machine that go all the way up to 7000 plus plus in China and uh, the height the current height is this the height of the highest component currently being mounted on your board let's say it might start from the shorter components and it, this number will eventually will go up higher and higher as higher components are being mounted later in the pick and place process usually right and uh, SMT PCB is basically the amount of uh, the number of PCB that is currently being mounted and SMT, SMT chip is the number of uh, chips that is currently being mounted and the current number basically is the number of chip currently being mounted on the current PCB so this is the total this is the current only for the current PCB on the conveyor belt right so other than that uh, all you need to do is basically load the PCB on your conveyor belt and click on start. So I'm going to apply, prepare the board, the PCB now. I'm going to apply some solder paste on the PCB. And after that, we'll come back and load the, the PCB on the conveyor belt and we'll be ready to run the pick and place job. All right. Okay, now let's move on to applying the solder paste to the PCB uh, I don't have any uh, stencil printer whether it's a manual semi or an automatic uh, stencil printer but this is what I have been using for the past 10 years and I was making about more than 30,000 of bots using this particular method and as you can see I have the bot uh, laid out on the table with a supporting scrap PCB that has the same thickness as our intended PCB being used to hold the PCB in place right and you have to make sure that the PCB is being hold rigidly doesn't move around or wobble around and another thing to 
notice is you have to make sure the if you were to have pads at the edge of the boards right make sure you have the pcb supporting pcb at the side too rather than having it uh unsupported like this part this part is okay because uh we are having only a blank panel side panel area of the pcb okay and uh i'm gonna put my stencil now on top of the pcb this is our stencil i only use a uh, frame stencil for for the work here because uh i don't believe in using the frameless type of uh of the stencil because it, it seems that uh there, there will be some bit of wobble on the x and y axis because there is no tension across the metal sheet of your stencil so i prefer to use frame stencil i know it's, it is a bit more expensive compared to the the one without the frame especially on the shipping but uh it's really worthwhile to pay that a bit extra to get that consist a bit of consistency on your solder paste printing okay so i am i have already put some solder paste here this is the solder paste that i use it is uh basically a sac 305 lead free solder paste i usually will not keep a uh, solder paste that long most of the solder paste are being kept about two to three months without any fridge we don't we don't have a special fridge to keep them at lower temperature but what we do here is if if we find out that the paste is a little bit little bit out i mean it's not no more that soft or a bit dry you should discard it we we try not to be stingy in this because we believe that uh so the paste application is the most important process in uh this entire assembly more important than the pick and place machine itself okay so i'm going to align the align the pcb to the pads now the stencil to the pads opening now this has to be done accurately you can push your finger a bit use your finger to push the stencil onto the pcb to get an accurate placement this is a process that you should spend a little bit more time on it and not trying to be to cut short but doing it roughly just make sure everything is aligned because we have a 0.4 mm pitch component on the board so it has to be accurate nothing less nothing more i'm just gonna take uh, a bit more checking on all the alignments I think we are fairly good okay and now I'm gonna use a squeegee this is my squeegee right this is a 150 mm squeegee you could also get some those that is uh, slightly smaller this is 10 cm but uh, I don't prefer it to use it because uh, my my entire hand cannot palm cannot doesn't cover the entire this, this sharp part will press against your palm so it's a bit uncomfortable so usually i will use this this size 15 cm but it also depends on the size of your pcb but for the sizes of the pcb that we use here this is just nice you can get this from aliexpress or tabao for about five to ten us dollar right or you can use any hardware squeegee those normal putty squeegee that you use for hardware work cement work that will work fine too but we find out that this is a lot better it is more rigid across the entire uh, squeegee length and you should be doing this this solder paste application at one go only one pass and shouldn't be repeating it and secondly it should be done at an angle 
something like 60 degree about that right i have seen many 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 many, many videos on youtube and instagram that that showing how they apply the solar piece they cannot they always like to do this you know pushing down the squeegee all the way to the bottom that is the wrong way to do it it should be some angle closer to the 90 degree rather than you know trying to be laying the squeegee lay flat on the stencil okay so let's apply the solder paste now and do a last check to ensure that we did not move the stencil okay let's apply the solder paste so you should apply some force on the stencil with your fingers it's a bit hard because this stencil is a bit small and gently push down the stencil and move it towards the right hand side okay push the squeegee aside now to lift up the stencil i usually will just put one hand on the right hand side push it down put some some soft force on it and lift the other side with your left hand slowly okay so there you go there's our solder paste application Mm, that is pretty good. The 0.4 mm pitch component, especially, that must be spot on and nothing less. Just do a rough check on everything to see that if there's any missing uh, solder paste on intended pads. I think we are good. Even the 0.5 mm pitch WSON, that's good. I think that that looks very well. Right, so I'm gonna put this button now on the machine, and let's do a real pick and place uh, job. Okay, we are ready to do the pick and place process now. I'm gonna click the start, and I'm gonna run this thing automatically by loading the board onto the conveyor belt, rather doing a manual placement. So click on start, you have the option of choosing auto run, auto run is what we are doing now, loading the board on the conveyor belt and it automatically push the board to the place for it to be mounted. Manual run means you need to click the in board first and then you need to put the PCB fix, right? So that is the manual run, but we are going to be running a auto run today, right? A few other settings under runtime setting is, uh, I'm not too sure about this, but I rarely touch this but i might go through this in uh, in the next future video right but for today let's click on the auto run and let's go
Okay, we are done with the pick and place process. I gonna stop this and we gonna take a look at the mounting effect of the placement. Click stop. Okay, we are back uh, with the PCB being pulled up from the machine and here is the mounting effect. So let's go through them one by one. So the most important one is the 0.4 and then pitch. QFN it looks good very good right that is very very accurate I'm very happy again the solder paste application is very important you can have a very accurate placement but if your solder paste application is bad you can forget about putting this board inside the oven right let's go through the rest of the jelly beans items the pin one is correct for the module and the chip uh -huh. let's go through board by board let's say from the top left right Uh -huh. uh, the first PCB looks okay except for the inductor over here slightly off I'm gonna correct it later 
and let's move on to the to one at the bottom the second PCB or the first column that looks okay yes everything looks spot on the third PCB of the first column uh -huh. we have again we have the one issue with the LED here I suspect that uh, the height of LED was incorrectly uh, entered if I'm not mistaken I think recently I have swapped out one of the LED rails so that could be one of the issue so if you have the height of the component wrongly set up uh, these are those uh, outcome usually that you will see you know where the the height is wrong so the nozzle doesn't go all the way down so you will end up hanging sideways or things like that right so I think this panel is this PCB is also okay the big stuff like the USB connector looks just fine the WSON 10 is also fine so let's move on to the second mirrored column hmm. okay the jelly bean part again the LED the LED the same LED is having the same issue so I, I suspect that uh, it should be the height uh, issues that I did not properly set up and we have also one SOT 32T that is uh, slightly offset I need to fix that too other than that again you see the LED is missing is either missing or maybe a height is incorrectly set up I gonna check on that later but other than that uh, everything looks good right maybe the module is a bit off I also need to check on that because one of the reason is this module right uh, the edges of the the module is not that uh, smooth so because these are made of PCB so there are some irregularity of the of the module itself so I think I'm gonna go through back the visual setup for that particular module before proceeding to make more of these boards other than that I think we are good this is really good this is the first run using the machine okay I gonna toast this into the reflow hour now and uh, we shall see and before that I could just just gonna make that small tiny adjustment to those uh, slightly misaligned or missing components and then I'm gonna put it inside the reflow oven okay see you a bit after this okay i have fixed all the uh the misalignment of the leds uh, and the missing led one piece was missing and i can confirm that it was the pneumatic feeders that we use on that particular uh, uh led right so it should that if i were to change it to an electrical feeder i guess that that issue will go away other than that everything is good now so i won't be this is one of our oven we have two this is the Puhui T937 we bought this a uh, few months back when we needed to make more bots with higher quantity so it has a larger area for you to put more PCB inside but uh, we usually only use it for bigger production run for smaller uh, size batch of uh, production we would usually use our hectotus oven right so this this is using the uh, our reflow oven controller that we make and sell on our website uh, and we have been using this for quite a number of years now and it has always been reliable and in my personal opinion I, I'm not trying to be biased but uh, it is better than this guy in a sense that uh, if you are doing lead free this guy is a better bet but the only drawback is uh, the amount of the size of the PCB that you can put in is uh, way much less compared to the big guy okay so I'm gonna put the PCB now in the oven and we shall see what uh, the outcome of the reflow process after this
okay we are back from reflowing the board the board has cooled down and here's the outcome of our entire assembly process right you can take a look at it everything looks very good pet the uh, joints look shiny especially on the 0.4 mm pitch component look at the 0.5 mm WSON that too looks great and look at the USB type C connector it looks just fine All right and again the issue was with the LED was the pneumatic feeder right that was one of the last LED that we have on the pneumatic feeders we have seen bought a few more new, uh, electrical feeders but we have yet to install them on the machine and I'm going to swap out the LED to be placed from the electrical feeder from here onwards everything looks good right look at the pitch just look at the MSOP here that looks great too I guess everything looks great so I'll be testing this out later on and you shall see what happens so this is the end of the part 3 of the video of using the HWGC uh, pick and place machine and uh, I might be doing a few more uh, that uh, concentrates on things like calibration like calibrating the machines uh, fast camera or the high definition high definition camera or the Calibrate, calibrating the nozzle or the feeder base height things like that so but that would come so soon now because I need to get back to a lot of work because it seems like uh, the part shortage uh, season has slightly recovered a bit and there are more and more parts that are coming in back in stock so I need to start assembling more bots now and uh, I'll be releasing this bot uh, probably in this month in end of November so if you are interested to get one you can get one on the on the on our website uh, this will be a limited run because there's still an issue with uh, this particular uh, supply there's not much uh, supply of this chip here the module here because the chip inside here which is a STM32 is currently running very low in stock worldwide okay I really hope you guys like this video and uh, if you really like please click the like button and uh, I hope to see you in the next one thank you